Why are we... Don't go back to macro. We've been staring at the fights. Why do you think this is a macro situation? You have an army that's more expensive than your entire childhood. Watch your interceptors die to a bunch of dudes hyped up on Stimpak. Watch it. Welcome back to Angry Coach Marathon. It's been a while, yes, since you played StarCraft 2, but also since we had one of these marathons. It's 2023. As we enter into the third year of 2020, I want to congratulate you on being here, watching my stream and my videos. That is probably the most productive thing you've managed to accomplish. Like, subscribe, and spend at least 20 minutes or so before falling asleep, so that way you watch enough advertisements to justify your presence here. Thank you, good luck, and let's get started. We have a new format. We're on Discord. We have uh, Sir Tom, a diamond Protoss. Sorry, it's a win. My recent losses are boring one push deaths under 10 minutes. No. What is this? Tom! Tom! Is Tom here? Sorry. Okay. Oh, what is this? Follower. Is that this all? is the first pylon. PR this is the first pylon. Is chilling for 50 months. I don't know where that goes. It's your first build. It's your first pylon. It's your first. So, here are the stereotypes. Terran's over here like, I've, I've worked out. I've, I've studied Hero Marine for so long, and I finally worked out all my, I have my notes. All right, we're, I'm running out. I'm going to need another pad soon, but I finally worked out a build from Big Game. Uh, Protoss, stupid and dumb. And why are they stupid and dumb? Because, and this stereotype is accurate, they literally don't take notes on anything. And this is why people think Protoss. Now, this is why Protosses don't ever want to engage Terrans or Zergs. Because the, the stereotype of Protoss is nerds over there on their Xbox 360 controllers in Diamond 1 saying, I don't know where to put my first fucking pylon. You couldn't open up a single game of like Max Pax or Hero or Showtime against Terran and figure out, like even if it was a Reaper wall pylon, which I'm not a fan of, but at least has a method to that particular madness, you could not be bothered to figure out where to put your first pylon. You've, you're on my stream. And how many how many months have you been? Four months subscribed. You've never seen me play a PVT. I'll look up pylon positions. It's it's not even look up. Like how many seconds? How many seconds? All right. Shut up, me. Uh, here. Let's see what this stupid nerd has. Okay, here we go. Clem versus Zhaun. Where does Zhaun put his first fucking pylon? Literally. Ah, oh, there it <laughs> He put his first pylon at the natural on this map. And then he put his second one in the main. He walled off the natural. How about the second game? How many seconds is it going to take to figure out where that first pylon goes? Literally fucking six seconds. There you go. Right <laughs> there. You got it? Was it that hard? Did, did that take a lot of effort? There's your PVT. Got it. So the summary is, you got to put it back there so it, like, it is behind your middle line or, like, right next to it. It's the pylon. Your pylon efficiency and necessary infrastructure safety. Okay? That is what you're trying to maximize. And right now, yours is essentially non-existent. Because why does, the, why, why does it matter? So... You're up against Terran. All Terran units are ranged, besides the best ones, SCVs. When you put a pylon here, it's not protecting anything. You can't build a shield battery to potentially protect your base. It's not really a location to warp in. Like, it's not going to help you as time goes on. It's just going to be a liability. And it indicates, most importantly to me, you have no plan. You literally, your first building, the first one, the literally first thing. You can't come in. It's like, that's like showing up to, uh, I don't know. What, what, what? That's like showing up to a drag race. I don't care what type of drag race. 
um, you're showing up to with like a ball and chain. I don't know. That's not it. That's not it. I, that's like you're dragging a ball and chain. That doesn't make sense. Um, it, it, and then showing up a day late and saying, oh, I didn't know what time it was. There, that's better. And then showing up like three doors down. Is this, is this it? No, this is a library, sir. Put the Cheetos away. I'm, I was trying to get more accurate, which is just having no idea whatsoever what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna pull back slightly on that because he does his PVP pylon placement. Though, I have my suspicions he's been putting a pylon on the top of the ramp like this since, like, 2011. In the on and off every few years, he gets motivated to actually play StarCraft. Tom, how close? Not close. Not close at all. You've never played Star- This is your first time, but it is my default. I've been playing 13 years, and I never learned where to put my pylons. Wait, it's your default? What do you do against Zerg? Anyways, it is a strike. Mm. I'm just upset in general. No, why do you need another pylon? Low ground or lose. So we learned against Zerg, so it's not default. It's... Okay, never mind. You don't need another pylon now. You're putting a pylon there. Now follow along with me, my friend. Why are you putting a pylon there? Because you feel like you need one on the low ground. Why do you feel like you need one on the low ground? Because you felt like you needed one near your base. So you built one here. And why did you build one there? Because you didn't know where to build your first one! Also, two gate isn't particularly great against Terran. It's just not good. Shouldn't it be a depth before stalker? Who cares? I don't care. Whatever you want. Besides Zealot after Cybercore. I've been supply blocked, so I decided not to this time. Once again, math comes in with a vengeance against Protoss. Like, the idea of being supply blocked was not good for me, so I've decided to just build pylons at random times. In random locations. So what's the plan? What are we doing? Oh wait, I could have gone to the strategy. Um... What the fuck? Never mind, I shouldn't have read this. This was a mistake. He says, I immortal drop. And then macro up, but my eco dies. Yeah, probably because you immortal dropped. Which is not a thing. It's just like, what are you doing? Why are you doing an immortal drop? Why are you doing any sort of drop? It's so fun. I saw it in a Hearthstone video. Fucking Protoss, right? Terran's over here struggling in platinum, like, like oh my god, do I get two engineering bays or one? Diamond one Protoss. Harstam did it once, so that was pretty cool. I like, gotta. Also, I like the idea of a mortal drop, but just like eventually getting the robo after two gates. It's kind of like Immortal Drop is just kind of something we do on the weekends. Otherwise, we just randomly build gateway units. Another pylon. Like, are you going to take a third or are you just putting pylons out there? And somehow we did still manage to get supply block, despite our best efforts. I was going to say despite our limited efforts, but best efforts also applies. Oh, okay. All right. My immortal drops usually involve doing a two stalker, two sentry attack as well. Well, four stalker, sorry. At the five minute mark. Which is when you could easily have like a four gate blink all in. You could add like disruptor drop. But no, we just walked across. You know, this is when Widowmind drops come in. 
he doesn't know that. That was just for everyone's benefit. The timing of Widowmind Drop is between 4.40 and 5 minutes if they're on point. Maybe a little later if they're not. Now, are they Widowmind Dropping? Who knows, right? Like, we didn't bother trying to scout, so... Ah, yes. The best anti-reaper option. The high ground immortal. There is no more efficient choice. So, how, how do you think that immortal drop's gonna go when he's constantly scouting you have an immortal? It's in the prism path. What, the immortal? Are you saying that the immortal sometime between now and when a prism comes out could not move to wherever the prism's going? Like... It, it's it's got that much inertia. You really got to get it going early, because the prism is at least like a minute out. So, ah <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that reaper got wrecked. I just like to shift rally to the prism because it looks really cool. Yes, it does. This is why Protoss keeps getting nerfed, guys. Okay? Doesn't matter how many tournaments it doesn't win. When Protoss can do this and threaten Masters, that's why people hate Protoss. I like the idea, like, the most efficient thing we could do. Like, we spent 8 APM fucking shift rallying the immortals into the prism. You know what else we could have done? Is just, you know, move the immortals. But, <laughs> but it's way cooler this way. All right. I believe, actually, I do have a diagram here. Something a little more Protoss appropriate than the Terran for dummies, though, just like. Let's see. Ah. Uh, oh, wait. This is uh, not that related, but what do we have here? Hmm. Some more bingo? Let's see. Um. This is a little bit of a lower level Protoss usually, but you never know what you're going to get. Like, I think a bingo card is more accurate for most Protoss. It's like, because who knows? It could easily be a Stargate follow up here. Throw a Forge and a Twilight in. I, lo I love how this probe has been sitting here for like a minute. Built a pylon. Not nearly enough minerals for a Nexus. Builds another pylon like, don't worry. Maybe this quarter we'll get the Nexus start. <laughs> Sometime soon. Throw some more Stalkers on. Ah, I think we got enough minerals. It's time. Slaps the Nexus down. Ah, micro time. So, why would this work? He's distracting for the Immortal Drop. This is just glossing over the idea that an Immortal Drop was the optimum choice. Our Charge Lot's not as cool. Our DT's not as cool. I guess Immortals are very cool. Ah, yes. You see he's upgrading? You could kill the Tech Labs. He's getting Stim and Combat Shield. Looks like we'll accidentally kill the tech lab back. Okay. Where's that? Where is it? Micro! I mean, it's working. It's working really well. And he's accidentally killing his own. He's, oh my god. God. And it loses everything. Did not need to lose everything. Does anyways. Who cares? It's, it's a total success. We're maxed on Chrono Boost. Whoever that guy was like, we should be able to queue up Chrono's, like, injects. This is the use case. Not Showtime, not Hero, but Diamond League Hero here. Sir Tom. T 
too busy microing your prism poorly against a Terran who's having a mental oh, breakdown. Which is all of them, by the way. Diplominator At varying rates. 25 months. <laughs> We're gonna wall off that area with gateways for reasons that will remain unknown. I'm not sure the wall off will help against with charge lots against bio. <laughs> Was that a scouting immortal that just came home? <laughs> Classic. Did you see the double drop head out? Because there's an observer that spotted it. No. Maybe the... What is this? It's a zealot. Apparently neither did I. Must have been SCVs. Must have been nothing. Just the wind. You see, observers are more an idea. Yeah, this is a classic bitch Terran mindset. And this is why Protoss get this far. There is something to be said. Like, P Protoss has always had the most confident players. In fact, I think the reason Protoss is struggling more now is they don't have any players who specialize in winning. Like, historically, there's been MC, SOS, Parting, Zest. These are all players who their actual gameplay, mechanically, eh. But they're just so confident that they're going to win that they, it just happens. Like, it just, they will it into existence with their confidence. And no other race has had quite dark is the closest thing I think we have. Beyond is getting there, I think with Terran. But they historically it's been Protoss that because Protoss units are are not that great, but it's kind of like a lightsaber. When you use it really well, it can be both one very cool and two super effective. But if you don't use it well, you're liable to literally lop off your own legs, so. Rainer's super confident. Rainer might be confident, but I don't feel like he asserts his confidence on the game in the same way that Zest and MC and Harding have in the past. And this here is why Sir Tom, Sir Tom the Ignorant, is Diamond. His, his pylon placements are whatever he came up with at some point in time. His build order is something he remembers from a Hearthstone video. His macro is technically existent, and his micro is also there. But at no point, I think, has Sir Tom worried about losing. We're looking to the future, whereas I can guarantee you the Terran's having a freak out like, oh my god, Immortal dropped so much damage. I gotta watch it, Zealots. Hey, what's wrong with Harstom? Nothing's wrong with Harstom, all right? Like, uh, he does cool Immortal drop builds that inspire Protoss throughout the lands. Well, what is that? What is that shit? Okay, Tom, Tom, explain this. What the fuck was that? Are you gonna tell me you were dancing under his Viking so he would see it? Nonverbal communication. All Protoss communication is nonverbal. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh my, like, it's pretty obvious what he's doing. I just wanted to hear the confirmation that I, I'm both giving you a strike and uh, a thumbs up at the same time. That's a totally like, hell yeah, brother. Like, uh. Have 
bring in the charge lots. You didn't even take the bait. You didn't even go. Not that we cared. Also, oh, no, no, you're winning this fight. Like, no, no, no. But wait, I have another, like, wait for that sick flank I set up. Is there Storm? No. They're just not our cons. Tank scary? There's one tank scary? I, I like, I like what, no, 100%. We're thinking too hard about the counterattack. Look at this micro. There we go, micro in again. Wow, you managed. This is impressive. You managed to turn a 40 supply lead into even. Now that is efficiency right there. Beautifully done. From the, the classic, like, move all the way into being a total coward for no reason. If you just A move through this fight, you easily kill all the Marines, the tank, and probably the base. It depends on if he lifts it in time. Like, we, the Zealots are actively chopping. There's an Immortal, there's Archons actually hitting their targets, but for some reason, this is the moment. All right. Th throw it in there. What was wrong with the Immortal Charge Lot Archon? What was wrong? Like, is Stargate going to solve the problems better? What is, what is the thought? Not one, not two, not three, but four Stargates here. At some point, we got a Robo Bay, you know, for safekeeping. I wasn't confident I could win with ground. There you go, thinking again. Classic mistake. Why are you thinking? Mineral field depleted. I want you, then again, I found that pylon placement. I was gonna say, cite me one game where a Protoss, like a Protoss with more bases has decided they're just gonna switch, like not maxed out into mass Stargate against Terran. Like, Give me one ex singular example where that's ever been done. No, Stargate is actively worse against Marine Marauder. I mean, you get enough carriers, it solves all your problems. But like, <laughs> Mass Stargate is just not good against Terran. The only time you use Stargate is if they're like Liberator Turtling. Or actually going mech. It's just actively worse than going, like, Immortal Archon. Ah, yes, the second Robo Bay is to upgrade Observer Speed. Because you can only do one upgrade per Robo Bay. Because, uh, licensing. <laughs> Watches it finish, like, uh... Wait a second. Like, uh... <laughs> Either that or it was supposed to be f second Robo Bay was to build carriers. Okay. Um. You mean like it was supposed to be a fleet beacon or? Oh, there's the fleet beacon. No, don't kill it. Don't, what, what are you doing? It's like, no. No. <laughs> it's there. You don't get anything for getting rid of it. It's not like the other Robo Bay is going to get jealous. It offended me. Ah, this is why people hate Protoss. <laughs> you built it. By the way, Terrans out there. Diamond Terrans. This is what what top tier Diamond Protoss think about. They forget how to build carriers, build an extra Robo Bay, and then spend time worrying about the Feng Shui of the Robo Bay. No, you can't pay for replays, not today. Next time, maybe. 
We can submit it and we might put priority. These are these are raw. Why why are we fighting here? This is a worse fight. This is worse than the last one. You're like, eh, whatever. You're attacking eight seconds before plus three attack. Like, your upgrade's gonna finish right after the fight does. This is what, pretty significantly worse than the last one. I don't know where the rest of his army is. Yeah, the zealots are over there chewing on some depots, but needed supply for carriers, yes. He was totally maxed out and couldn't build any carriers. You know what? He was pretty close. He's building two more pylons to get unsupply blocked. He's like, no, 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 this is the... I, all my losses are just losing in 10 minutes. AKA, I don't have a build order, so when anyone attacks me and exploits the fact I have no plan, and it all just comes together like a fucking dream catcher, I lose. But if I survive for long enough for my dreams to no longer be memes, I usually win. Which is, you know, a very zest-like approach to the game. Why not warp in a zealot? No, the probes. The probes built it. The probes must destroy it. You know there's a warp gate hotkey, right? I don't think it's terrible to have it on a control group, but whatever. Yeah, I like the carriers are definitely one of the few ways to throw this game. Carriers are just not nearly. They're just not the, the choice. They are countered by Marines. This and ghosts, both of which he's been building since well before the carriers were chosen. It's probably still going to work because the Terran's going to over micro. But nuclear launch detected. Hey, wow. Why are we? Don't go back to macro. We've been staring at the fights. Why do you think this is a macro situation? You have an army that's more expensive than your entire childhood. Watch your interceptors die to a bunch of dudes hyped up on Stimpak. Watch it. The interceptor count is now 11, and that's because they just finished rebuilding. Am I the only Protoss who knows this stuff? Uh, probably. Protoss, by and large, don't know things. Like, they left a massive, super duper, ultra, hyper capital ship sitting in the ground while they got overrun by the Zerg. Until some crotchety old ancient historian dude decided to be like, hey, how about this thing? So. Yeah, I heard a solarite. I don't remember exactly how they found it, but. You know what every Terran dreams of? Is just building marines. That is a Terran's mundane yet common dream. And you, my friend, did you just recall to the same base? Did you just mothership recall? Do you even know what buttons your mothership has? Do you know what the buttons do? 
Or are you just clicking them? That recall stunned the carriers, by the way. The time warp button is different. It's a different button. They have very different icons. Like, the recall one looks just like the... First three tags, chill, salt, drama. Are they not all accurate? You think I would just go on the internet and tell lies? Your warriors have engaged the enemy. How have we run out of minerals? I do not know. After losing 10,000 more resources. The two Colossi are really going to make the difference, if anything, by the end of this. The two Colossi... ...are the only thing that really does damage here. Oh my god, they're still going to win. Shame on you. But that was totally... So for those wondering what an Iyer Chef is, an Iyer Chef serves you up a buffet platter of whatever random shit they have on the table that day. That is why Iyer Chef was there at the start, and I'm glad to see it will remain there. As... So, as for improving to Masters, no. That's like a C minus. It's like a, I wouldn't be surprised if you dropped at this stage. Like, th th there was nothing there. You're relying entirely on the unreliableness of your builds to get wins. That is why I am certain the the commentary here was well. When I get uh, I, my recent losses are boring one push deaths. Which, once again, is because you don't have a build or any sort of, like, basic common sense. Which means all the things you would have learned by spending any time learning don't exist. The things that keep you from dying to one push. Danzig, aka Damho, so strategy info is Protoss things. So, very helpful. Once again, Protoss coming in with a very eloquent and detailed description of their strategy as it, it transcends the leagues. Though, Use I will say, better pylon you... placement than Sir Tom. Really is chilling for 23 months. I think we're real. It's actually in relatively the right spot. Okay, alright. What are you going to do if you find one? If you find a proxy rex. What care what what's the plan? I I appreciate the due diligence, though it does strike me as maybe a bit overdone. Like, he has a barracks at his base. That's enough. I lose less if I know. If it does make you feel bad, as long as you don't fuck up your build. Then, okay. The oh my god, he killed the SCV. <laughs> oh, he mostly got there, yeah. He didn't scout the gas, but okay. His barracks is there, we killed that, is, whatever. Good. Good enough. Second pylon. Pretty close. Not not perfect for all that, like, it's fine. It's fine. Stalker. 
because stalkers are, they feel like the right choice because, oh, and then he cancels for an adept because he realized he was making the wrong choice. You see, what you don't have, ah, but the gate of shame. There it is. So the gate of shame is the gate you build because you wonder why you have so many minerals. And the reason you have so many minerals is because you forgot your second gas. Uh, the, you don't have enough gas for your tech. So you're like, yeah. All right, well, so the point in the, the problem, the problem with having a second gate is when does that gate finish? That gate is done in 46 seconds. Warp gate is done in uh, 75 seconds. Well, 75 seconds. Each unit, if you're lucky, you get one unit out of that gate. For the most part, there is no point in having one more gate unit that much quicker. Now what it's done is slow down your probe and tech production. Notice how you don't have any probes producing and you don't have money for tech. You're gonna have to choose. You're going to have to choose whether you want two more probes in a timely manner or if you want your tech earlier because this gateway is just sitting here wasting your money. Why didn't you just let him kill the Reaper? Stop thinking! You're Protoss! What are you doing? You had it! Like, what are you doing? Yeah, you- you- you tagged the Reaper. Don't cancel! No, let- What? No, uh, not, one! How do you even know you could cancel the Shade? Two! You've killed it! What are you doing? Oh no. Like, I want to give a strike because this is just far too much thinking for anyone at this level. The fact you got that close to killing the re like, you have 184 gas, you have 255 minerals, you've been staring down that reaper. You haven't built any pro- you know what? It is a strike. You haven't built any probes since that reaper showed up because, oh my god, a reaper! And then you had it. It was dead. And, like, you did a fucking last second cancel so that way you leave a cliffhanger for the next episode. It's not so much that this exact moment is what matters. The point is, that moment shouldn't even be relevant. Either the reaper dies or it doesn't, but we should, should have stopped thinking about it a while ago. The fact we are still actively microwing is the problem. What, what is this? No, no, Danny. 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 Big D. What are you doing? What is this? What are you doing? How are you going to counter whatever all these advanced things, a spotter pylon? How are you going to counter whatever you spot with no units? What is your plan for countering the things you see? Because right now you have 240 gas. You have 220 minerals. You have no tech. If you're making a spotter pylon before you are making your... The most important thing you could build, which is your tech building after your cyber core. You're wrong. It's wrong. There is no scenario in which you need to spot more than you need your tech. They're not mutually exclusive, but clearly you're acting like a Terran right now. You're acting like, I need to know exactly what my fucking Gold League opponent is doing. You look at these replays, you look at the Diamond Leaguers, and you think you know what they're doing? I mean, you might not be the one backseating in Twitch chat like half the people here who've never even reached that league, but at the same time... I did used to play Terran. Ah, oh, it has residual effects. You gotta put that out of your mind. Alright? 
You gotta pretend that never happened. It's hard. But what I want you to do, and this is not actually good advice, but it's good advice for Protoss. No scouting until you have your tech building. You can scout after. You still do the same build, just don't scout. After you build your first tech building, you can send a probe out. If they have something too dangerous, like, you may occasionally die to, like, a proxy rex or something. But it's better to focus. The first priority for you as a Protoss is that tech building. The only time it's not is when there's, like, a proxy rex or something. But as soon as we determined that wasn't the case, it should have been the laser focus. It should have been Twilight. It should have been Robo's fine. Stargate. Not a gateway. Like, what about Hallucinated Phoenix? No, not hallucinating anything. No, 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 no. Remember, Sir Tom is Diamond One. Let that be your inspiration. Or at least your guideline. Okay. So we're building an immortal. An immortal is not an observer. The first thing out of the robo, which the robo should have been much quicker, can be an observer. So that way, what do observers do? I know this is going to sound crazy. They observe. So that way we don't have to stress out with all the units out here. There is, he built a reaper. The immortal, what does the immortal do? What is the immortal for? Going to drop it? Are you going to tell me it's an immortal drop? Yes, he might have a tank, but he's over here doing a Bronze League Heroes build. He's got an unreactored... This is who you're playing. This is your opponent. I think this might help. This doesn't always help people to know what your opponent is doing. But look at this build. He's got an unreactored barracks. He built a single tank. He's got an engineering bay. Does this look like an army that requires an immortal to kill? If you're like, well, that's a siege tank. He has three marines and a reaper. That's the ground army. Aside from the tank. That's three marines and a reaper. Probes and a shield battery could kill that. So we're over here assuming that Beyond is going to come in with like a, a double cyclone lock-on drop. No, no, no. This guy is probably going to go for plus one infantry weapons in a moment when he realizes he has 350 gas. We're better than this. Just assume your opponent is at least as, a ter as terrible as you, because matchmaking does indeed work. I have my suspicions that we're about to build, one, spotter pylons, and two, freak out and justify the immortals, because that was a tank. Might I remind you, he has not even discovered starport technology. He went back into his SCV build tab, and you know what he pulled out? Another barracks. <laughs> That's what he pulled out. So, if you're worried about a medevac, worry no further. The starport does not exist. You are countering nothing. You're countering your own fears. But you sh it's creating more in the process. The twilight's fine. Hallucinated Phoenix, fine. Third base, fine. He's still got tanks, though. Okay, so. Here we are. No, no, okay. Calm down. This is... It's... The, the previously played Terran explains so much. Like, but I can't even just have map hacks on my orbital command anymore. I actually have to try to scout. Terran's over here getting there. Uh, ink all over their hands right now, their counter arguments. But no, 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 no. One observer. One observer sieged up like right there. Just pretend it's an overlord. Okay, it's actually better than an overlord. What's most important now as we get to 50 probes is going to be more gates. We should be getting to 50 probes. Two gates is not enough. It's too many early, it's too few later. There's the observer. No, stop! Stop with the pylons. Just build the damn pylons in your base for a while. Alright, spotter pylons at 100 supply. 
Okay? You know why? Because right now, what you're countering... Well, at least pylons give supply. Turrets do not. He is building... You are up against someone who's queuing up turrets. This is... Either you are the most incapable smurf, or you're trying way too hard. Because... You're over here doing constant hallucination scouts, which are about to fly into his turret ring. This man is about to have more turrets than he has marines. At the six minute mark. So let's worry about ourselves. At least the expansions are aggressive. But probes, probes, and pylons. Not spotters. Pylons. Probes and pylons. The pylon the probe count is not good enough. It'd be way better. The gateway count is not good enough. Three gates by 40 probes. And then eight gates at 50 probes. That's the number. Thank you, Fink. You see, the reason we're going into such detail here is because there's hope. There's hope here. This is clearly a Protoss who can learn. But we gotta pull back on the worrying about the opponent. Because once again... Once again. Yeah, we got... Two engineering base. One engineering bay upgrade. Ah, there's the starport. Somehow supply block. Probes! Probes! Objective gaming. Okay, fun fact. The remaining army was, at that moment, uh, one tank, one marauder, and ten marines. Which I think three immortals... Half a dozen stalkers, some charge lots. In it. It's not bad to go back and focus. Like like that that's objective gaming. As long as we're actually building at home and not like randomly building stargates or something. I don't care if you're Xiaon or Gold League. Honestly, people gotta stop using force fields with charge lots. It's not working. It's not it's not doing it. it I have not seen in quite a while force fields actively help Protoss. In fact, almost always do they help the Terran. I do mean against Terran, not Zerg. Against Zerg, they have a lot more use. But Marine shoot through the force fields is kind of OP. It is almost always better to just have more guardian shields. Yeah. If you have that, like, if you have energy to spare, just, just wait at the guardian. Not that it's a huge deal. The fact there were sentries at all. Okay. A minus. You need to stop. Remember, you're not Terran anymore. And the Terrans you're playing are like that. That is easy diamond until you actually hit uh, something you need to worry about scouting, probably. Maybe higher platinum, but there's no chance you stay in gold if you actually play enough games. Or lower plat. That is... Don't intimidate yourself. We now have a... <laughs> Just changing gears from our, uh, our, our Corvette into our horse-drawn carriage. Gumby, the Silver League Protoss, who says his strategy is Zealot Immortal Archon, I think. Okay, Gumby. Enjoyed watching. Well, I hope so. Or else. No strike for Gumby. So, Silver, 
and this was played a month ago, which I assume is the last game you played. Silver, we're, we're going to worry about knowing what any tech buildings are and building some probes. And not just building stalkers or void race. Though that might be too much to ask. Okay. We're on the Gumby cam, by the way. I, I Sometimes I have to check and be like, did I move off the camera? No. Good, good usage of Nexus hotkey. That, yeah, that's fine for the first time. It's PvP, so... It's... The counterpoint, it's silver. So, whatever. He has an idea. Learning how to wall off the low ground on a ramp, map with a ramp, will work for all matchups. Especially in the Metal Leagues. Like, it's not necessarily ideal at the higher level, but it's perfectly fine to do this. As long as you, you know, actually set it up as opposed to just building in that general location. As we see here, both players going with the double pylon opener because they forgot what the build order was, but they made it this far. So credit to them. Like, close enough. Close enough. Gumby. We're still on the Gumby cam. I'm not crazy. I am paused, though. Oh. Okay, so you see spotter pylons can be taken too far. Dumb. Uh, you don't want to create bad habits too early. <laughs> uh, there are two types of scouting in the Metal Leagues. I think we're the second, which is the better type. The first type is, I scouted. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but I'm very scared. Okay. And then there's the second option, which is, I scouted. So check that one off. Anyways, back to whatever I was thinking about. <laughs> because on paper, your opponent hasn't expanded... <laughs> The build order says scout. It didn't have any other specific details. Scouting done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was a probe. That was odd. So here's the key to what he's doing. It is um, very little. <laughs> At 23 out of 55, with no units. Wait. Nope, that's a pro. But I'm not too worried about it, as we got a lot more going on at home. I'm actively trying to ignore him as much as possible. Doing a... Well, I feel like there are definitely... It could be more ignored, but I get I get it. I get it. He's not doing anything that you need to worry about this moment. Alright, I want to be clear here. Those stalkers very likely could have just... Could have just walked up and killed a bunch of pro, but... This is what I get for going to every one camp. Uh, anyways. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you have an expansion, a nexus, which costs several minerals, and he, to your knowledge, does not have a nexus, which costs several minerals, which means he has several more minerals, I go ahead and 
Worst case scenario, assume that those minerals are spent somewhere else. In this case, semi-true. Not entirely true. Most of them just aren't spent. But it is worthy of note. Okay, so another another math problem for you. So, I, Gumby, I want you to count to five for me in ascending order. Can you count to five? It's, a, it's not a trick. One, two, five. Ah, I see, I see. So three would have been before. So that's why you think two is more than three. And therefore, trying to out-micro three stalkers with two stalkers. Fair enough. I got it. I got it. The numbers that makes don't sense. Lie, and they spell disaster for you. I, I like the choice of adepts. Not because it's a good choice, but because, like, it's not. Mostly, actually. That, I couldn't come up with anything better. We're just throwing them in there. <laughs> God. Oh, God. I... For someone who is actively ignoring the other player as much as possible... You're quite actively not ignoring them. This is way worse than I remember. Usually is, isn't it? And a lot of you might think, well, he's screwed. No, we're, we're only halfway through the game. So... Interesting. The summary is, if you are a Protoss who took a Nexus, and they are a Protoss who did not take a Nexus, the... I don't want you to leap too far. Don't break an ankle. But the logical journey I want you to take is, well, maybe they use that to build units. So, in this case, here we are. He cheated. He built them off the mid lane. We all know we're playing ARAM here. Um, but... You're not, you're not allowed to actually build things outside of the pathing of the first probe because that's an illegal move. But the Protoss do a lot of illegal things and nobody calls them on it, so. That's why they must get nerfed. That's our only way to, to counter the Protoss. This is gonna be the most effective immortal. Oh my god. Meanwhile, there are three probes left. Credit for not using select all army hotkey, by the way. Killed all but <laughs> killed 21 probes. Ah, yes, both players very focused on their micro on the aggressive front. Can those stalkers get out of there? I'm very excited to find out. Okay. All the probes! Well, maybe not. Okay, that's fine. All right, Gumby, get your get your abacus out. Never mind. He's just gonna sit there. Okay. Well, that's about that. And then the game continues four more minutes. I do want to remind everyone, just real quick. Just one moment. Zealot Immortal Archon, I think. You didn't think too hard, did you? <laughs> And the thing is, it was so hard to be wrong. So far, the key units have been Adepts and Stalkers, which were the only, besides Sentries, the only other units you could have built. There was an Immortal. There was a Zealot. He did say Zealot, not Zealots. Okay. 
Ah, yes, the perfect time to focus on upgrades. You have no idea how many probes you killed. Which is probably a good thing. You see, an honorable Protoss sends it directly down the mid lane. We don't think about how those stalkers came to be. We don't think about the uh, just illegal Protoss pylon placement some of our opponents use. Straight down mid. Right down, straight down mid. Every game. That, that directly. Thank you for adhering. <gasps> no. How dare you? Oh, you're patrolling. And of course, you're taking the entire squad uh, protocol. We're going to take our entire army because having our army out of position hasn't hurt us in the past. There has been no situation where having your army in a random location on the map has actively made things difficult for you. So therefore, this is a good idea. I can't think of a single time when your units were far out of position, you were left defenseless at home, that that was exploited. So. And here's your real comment is, so what have all these units accomplished that a single unit or probe did not or could not? What has like three quarters of your army supply accomplished that a probe could not have done as well. The lowly probe. It's in the name. Probe. Is that? Okay, we got a war prism. I should have sent one. Or you could have just attacked at any point and killed it. It was also on the table. Because he was at three work. New subscriber but detected. Why can you do specialist chilling for sixty-eight? Spotter pylon. <laughs> yeah, supply box. Still waiting on those archons. If if he does, I don't think it's possible. The game ends in like a minute. Excited for this. I <laughs> didn't. <laughs> ah, yeah, so going for that one one timing. It's micro. T VIP service, I see. I am pretty sure zealots walk faster than the warp prism flies, but it's not nearly as fancy. <laughs> Once they get that charge, wait, they don't have charge. So they don't, like, well, with charge they do, but we don't have charge done yet. That's part of our timing attack. Yes. By the way, he's on one base. So, one, there's another half of the map that we did not scout. Two, he's on one base. So either you've completely misjudged this and he has more than enough to crush you, or... Well, probably could have done this a while ago, but... <laughs> All right, well, we'll sneak in. Ah, huge gamer move. While also attacking. Okay, so like six... You see, you see your micro here? One comment on that. Uh, don't. Well, that was an interesting Zealot Immortal Archon. That was, uh... Thanks. I mean, it's silver, so it's a B. Anyone who knows how to build their first pylon, which is apparently not even a requirement, and gets an expansion without using the Select Army hotkey is guaranteed to get out of silver. But the decision-making, which was quite clear, but also incredibly confusing may pose may make it take a little longer that is my assessment so well done but also let's uh focus on the home front a little more
We got Ubok has gifted five subs. We're, we're beginning the speed run. We have two pro diamond two Protoss in a row. Here we have Robo Opener trying to be aggressive. I have no clue how to deal with drop tear and tryhards. And over here we have I plan to do disruptor drop. So we have a bunch of Robo Protoss and Diamond 2 who probably struggle against Terran, but more than likely win these games. Anyways, so um, we will see. But we're going to quickly, because they had the unluckiness of one being the most common race so far in the Angry Coach, and two, back to back, they are uh, tied I'm together. Sure it'll be better this time. I will be judging them not only individually, but against each other. And with prejudice. Okay. Fine. Interesting. No, it's illegal to go for 16 because it turns red. Also, who could have expected a Reaper to come out? That nobody ever builds a Reaper. Well, It doesn't always show up at between 2 minutes and 2 minutes and 5 seconds. There's no way to know the timing. And also, what is a timer? Robo on time. Looking fine. Fair in line. Tasty limes. All right. Buy my mixtape. On purpose? Okay. All right. It's too much. Is that, I know, I know, Reapers are the worst, but there's a reason we build in the depth first, like 90% of the time, especially if you're not going blink. One is it's easier to get your tech up. Two, it counters the Reaper better. So somehow that Reaper still managed. Oh, it got two kills. Never mind. Well, one of them was on the other side. We got one kill on Research this side. Is of the done. Did a whole lot of microwaves, not a lot of targeting. Are they both doing disruptor drop? Wait a second. Is every Diamond 2 Protoss the same person? Um. He didn't say he's doing. He said Robo Opener, but it looks like disruptor drop. Which is a surprisingly... <sighs> Sir! You see, this is why the Disruptor nerf is a buff for Protoss. Because for most Protoss, they're just more likely to hurt themselves. No, he's not getting an X for that. This is the most predictable possible thing that could have happened. And also hilarious. If he had been just a normal macro player and built a goddamn observer like anyone else. In fact, he did. But he was too lazy to bring it back. He's like, I have this disruptor. This is a terrible drop. This doesn't even threaten anything. It's not going to kill any probes. We don't need to chase it. There's three Widow Mines, none of which are in range of the mineral line. Yes, Widow Mine drops are the worst, but this is the least worst of many of them. It doesn't actually do anything. I kill one. The other one. Well, the Widow Mine gets one. Disruptor gets the second. The beauty of the Disruptor is you have to manually control it, too. Like, the Widowmine just fires. But the Disruptor, there's a 
at some point, either while the Purification Nova is out, or at least at the very start, that thing was targeted. So, someone sent that order. And, I, and now you have the embarrassment of everyone knowing the, the other Widow Mine got out. Oh, don't warp in. If you're going to warp in something on top of the mine, warp in like a zealot. Why are we warping in a stalker? Why? Okay, this is... You know what? This all adds up, even in diamond, to a strike. Mm. It, I, this is why I go win on my drop. Because this is just a total, utter breakdown. There's no reason. This Widowmine drop should have killed zero units. Maybe a stalker? Like, from the first drop? But instead, the Widowmine drop killed two stalkers. The Disruptor killed a third stalker. Probes had to be pulled off because the stalkers didn't kill the medevac in time because they were too busy getting shot in the face. Hey, this is me. Sorry. You're everyone tonight. Hmm. El Stubert, are you here? Do you shoot any of your own stalkers with... Can you confidently say you don't shoot your own stalkers with disruptors? I completely fucked up this Widowmind defense. Yeah, you don't really get to complain after having this level of prep. I know, Widowminds are the worst. But... You, you don't get to complain about drop Terrans when you build all of your tech on two incredibly vulnerable pylons in the corner of your base. Shoot yourself in the face while not building probes, bank up 800 minerals, see the drop coming, and still manage to get... Like, this is just a cornucopia of failure. You've done a great job of, of demonstrating what not to do against Widowmine Drop. You, bu you built two disruptors and they're just going to sit there? That's it? Are we going to build a prism now or something? Why a Why do you build two disruptors? Why not get a prism? What what's the point of two disruptors to start the game? If you're going to put... You we've already seen what happens with them on defense. They are not defensive units. That's like keeping a live hand grenade in your bedroom. It's like any intruders, I'll throw it right at them. You're also in the room, bro! I also felt- I always feel like the disruptors make Terrans nervous. Maybe worry less about the Terrans' feelings. They're already fragile enough, your Protoss. And worry more about... not shooting your own units. Like... You can't- you can't just make disruptors and say, Psh! own those libs because libs own you in fact every starport unit is a counter i uh, can't <laughs> detected i'm gonna Explain shoot my own stalker in the face months. to own him Can't yeah he's gonna be so nervous when he sees how how well i Bring dick cheney this all right not only am i gonna shoot my own stalker in the face that stalker and his family are gonna apologize for it for being in the wrong spot at the wrong time Oracle is lib counter? I said starport. Does an oracle come out of a starport? Not that I know of, though that would be the buff Terran finally needs. Is there another Protoss in the game? No. Maybe have some context clues, Sherlock. Okay. Well, we saw it. The probe count's already down 10. You have not been... You don't need four more pylons. You need probably two more pylons, but... You need probes. We desperately need probes. Mind out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. You're not... You get unsupply block. You're building zero probes. Which is not very many probes! 
You didn't even lose probes to the Widow Mine drop. There's no excuse. You've lost two probes. You just haven't built any. You can't even say Widow Mine's killed all my probes. Your incompetence killed all your probes. They were never even born. They both died to the Reaper. There is no excuse for being 10 probes down right now. They're attacking your base. How how's that setup working out? How's your how's your base setup working out for you? How's this how's this tryhard drop Terran? All he did was fly over the wall you made for yourself and not go blink. You set yourself up for failure, and you're like, how dare he? This is the most casual drop he could possibly do. He flew over the stalkers. They just weren't in the right spot. This is not the tryhard part. He doesn't need to do anymore. He's already up 12 workers. His third command center's about done. He's already in a great spot. In fact, I bet the try-hard drop part is the part of the game when a Diamond Terran is too scared to actually attack and win, so they try to use Metavax instead. That's, I assume, what's going to happen here. All right, your place your bets. Uh, those disruptors are going great. Very intimidating. Now down... T you have lost seven probes. 53 to 32. That is unacceptable. A star. Why are you building a Stargate? Don't you say it. What is the Stargate for? What are we spending? Our precious non probe making minerals and gas to kill that medevac? Fuck you. Fuck off. You're gonna spend 150, 150 against a Terran you know is building siege tanks to what? Get a Viking? Or not a Viking, sorry, a Phoenix to kill that medevac? You're not gonna get a Twilight for. Oh, you are getting charged. I apologize. You're not gonna get enough gateways. You're not gonna build anything out of the Robo. I have to remember them. They always get to those spots and I have to remember them. I hate it when they make units and I have to remember they made units. Me too, bro. That's really rough. You have engaged the enemy. Also, by the way, there's only two Marines in there. Just in case this became the most dangerous thing. You killed most of the- there's two Marines in that meta bank. I don't know what's more dangerous. Two Marines, or oh, apparently two Zealot, or, you know, four siege tanks and a bio army that forgot combat shield. Army under attack. Select all and pack. He's getting it now, but he's getting it after the push is already happening. My god. This is what diamond balance complaints are made out of. I actually lands a disruptor hit. Nerf him! Get him out! Okay. Your warriors are under attack. You took all the minerals from that cluster, you thief. You pulled the probes. You pulled the like a third of your why why did you pull the probes? What the fuck? What the fuck was that? Not like this game is going well. Look at the Terran, by the way. 1700 minerals zero units in production this is your opponent so evenly matched he has he's building nothing he is staring at these medevacs this is his life right now maybe if we stopped building buildings that are actively blocking the base and making it harder to deal with drops or you know stressing out about two marines and a medevac with All of the stalkers. 
Medivacs are my death? No, you are your death. Your lack of building probes, your mind games that end up literally shooting you in the face, your your complete and utter disdain for building a base in a way that doesn't actively hurt you, your focus on whatever's right in front or at the corner of your eye as opposed to what your observer was literally seeing, which was an army that you needed to deal with, but medevacs are the death. Medev I guess medevacs are the death because the thought of medevacs is so important that we wor don't worry about, you know, the actual threat, which is tanks and liberators and a bio army. Like, you're over here building disruptors again. You've landed one out of five disruptor hits. You got five gateways. All the stalkers are here now. We all know what hotkey we're using. For some reason, one of them is actually on... I assume that was the first stalker that was built, which was the last time we tried to use control groups. And, you know, control groups are kind of important when you're literally sitting on live grenades. So, here we are. Those probes had two choices. One was... Well, I guess they had three choices. One was do nothing. Two was run away. Three was attack the bio. You chose the worst one. There is no scenario in which that was ever going to be good in any way. Oh, there goes the Colossus. Those disruptors intimidating the shit out of him. I tend to control clip. Now, if only there was a way to actually control groups of units, especially very active and important units like disruptors, as opposed to scrambling to click on them every time you need them. I don't know what they call it. Maybe like a, uh, so like a, um, hmm, like a leashing system. No, that wouldn't be right. A containment, uh, box. I'm not sure what we call it, but that sounds like it would be a good invention. He looks very scared. Anything? Maybe if we chrono boost that phoenix out. If you combine that with plus one ground weapons, finishing seconds after the fight. Like... Okay, so how does this go with control groups? How it goes is you can move your entire army back, and then you can have the disruptors firing to cover the retreat, so that way you can warp in, potentially hit any units. But when you can't do that, your army ends up coming back with your disruptors. Here we go again. And the only way to reselect them in this convoluted clusterfuck is to select all army again, which brings the rest of the units in. No, this is a moment where he thinks he's going to win the fight, guys. Okay. He sees this on the screen. He saw that tank explode. It's like, I'm going to win. Because he doesn't have object permanence, as we've already discovered. That's why that medevac city in the corner with eight stalkers was more important than the tanks that he knew were there, but then left the observer vision and therefore ceased to exist until they showed up at his base. So what I'm saying is your average Protoss player has the mental uh, development of approximately a four-year-old, um, which does seem about right. Also able to handle approximately the same amount of control groups. Or a particularly talented puppy, like a golden retriever or something. I don't know if there are any of those out there. Okay, so this entire part of the fight was trying to figure out how to fire the disruptors. That was beautiful. This, like, it starts off okay, but then we spend, like, two seconds wandering in trying to figure out how to actually shoot the disruptors. Beautiful. Here we are. Here we go. Where do I want to shoot it? All right, I'm controlling it. And shoot. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, it's bad. All right. Research 
really bad. Really fucking bad. That's just horrible. Thankfully, Protoss, like you, exist so Terran can win any games in Diamond. Then you got Tom over there. Tom didn't build a single disruptor. Tom knows his limits. Okay? Up Tom up. doesn't know where to build his first pylon or his last pylon. But everything in between, he also doesn't know, but he's very confident about. It's finished up. This is another case of thinking far too hard. When do the try-hard drops come in, by the way? All I've seen so far were the most lazy, like, two medevac drops. And he hasn't done any multi-prong. He's just sent medevacs in. It's like, I have medevacs, send them in. Not like left, right, center, no. Two medevac. That's it. This is the whole attack. I mean, on the minimap, you can see he's setting up for the left side now. But that was only after doing the drop. It's not about winning or losing. It's no GG. Shame on you. And uh, for the rest, shame. too. Not just that. Just the shame. whole thing. It was shameful. Shame. It was terrible. The uh, theoretical probe deaths, it, it, that was like, uh, if you keep playing like that, it's not an upward trajectory. That's actually like a D plus. Not only are we not building probes, we are going out of our way to do the wrong thing. So the mechanics aren't there. Thought process isn't there. The mindset isn't there. None of it's there. I don't know how we got this far, to be honest. I got it. Um, of course, many Terrans won't even do a Widow Mind Drop until this point. PvP is a clusterfuck. I used to play a lot more. Mm. Maybe time to rethink from the ground up. Maybe, uh, go watch a Hearthstone video and pick a build and then do some vague impression of it. It'll probably help. That so far is the most reliable Protoss strat. Builds hold me back. All right. Builds shackle the mind. Okay. I like to keep it free and able to expand, unlike my builds. I don't know. All right, Stubert, do we even need to watch? Or are you telling me it's going to be different? Also a Disruptor Drop Gamer. Because we have another Diamond 2 Toss, back to back. I mean, if he does well, we can learn from it. If he does poorly, then... You see, I think a, a part of the, the shame is that it's not like a... I don't give a fuck, I'm doing my thing. It's like, I give a lot of fucks. And now I'm unhappy. I gotta... That, le that sets you up for much more, um... Frustration. That was the difference between, uh, uh Tom and... Uh, Shep. Besides that, only a few hundred MMR. Who could have thought a reaper? Oh, a reaper! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Great job, everybody. Great job out there. You're the real heroes. Yeah, just surround it when he tries to micro too hard. Duh, obvious. Just kill it. You don't even need an adept. No, you need the adept. Don't. Your adept was late. But, fine. This is a much better disruptor drop build. 
well, one, because you're doing a disruptor drop, not a disruptor intimidation. When he finds those disruptors in my base, he's going to be scared, Bill. Much more scary if they're in his base. Pro tip. I didn't drop. I never tried to drop. I know. I know. I was there. Bit early on the chrono. Also, you definitely could get two more gates here. You definitely could find two more gates. Look at the money. I always lose the drops to turret rings. Are you sure you're diamond two and not gold two? No, 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 no. What is this fucking classic build here? You can't go one gate. Yeah, this is... You know what? I'm already trusting this a lot more, though. This is some confident Protoss. I have no units. I'm getting a third Nexus. Warp Prism Speed. Twilight Council. Sure, yeah. Good luck. What if he attacks you at any point? Well, that... In fact, until, like, four and a half minutes, unless he's going for, like, uh... Like a three racks... It's just Widow Mind Drop as the option, so. Research complete. He won't attack because I scouted his net. That's very stupid. That was a stupid thing you said. You have no guarantee of that whatsoever. But I like the confidence, though. That's what's important. Assuming. Wait, no, you're not even El Stubert. That's a different person. I <laughs> said, you. Wait a second. I believe the logic, though. I don't like my drop here. Why? Because you just. You missed? You know, at least you didn't kill your own stalker. So, so far, Stuber won. Oh, zero, I guess. To, and so far, the disruptor kill count is in Stuber's favor. Okay. Well, that was not good. Um. Oh yeah, warping another double down with all your gateways. Every single gateway warping in. He must be so intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least you're building probes during it. Up to 40 probes. Look at that. Now, you're not doing anything with those probes, but it's better to have the probes and not know how to spend your money than not have the money in the first place. There you go. We're just gonna fly. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you doing? This is madman. Where's this turret ring? Don't do it. This is the stupidest fucking thing. Oh my god. Oh, he's going to shoot his own stalker. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, don't expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. But still. Okay. Well, the kill count so far is one. You know you could have put the stalker back in the prism as well. But that, no, no, that's not getting crazy. But the stalker could have been micro back in Don't worry about it. It was six kills. Okay. I think I saw somebody quote 10 kills. That was six. Was six kills. Uh, I, uh... So six kills is borderline for a stalker. Well, if you get the if you get the drop out, I think fine. Whatever. Six, ten. I got many numbers, bro. Like one, two, five, fifteen. Like you just keep, it keeps going up. And the worker's kill never goes down, does it? It doesn't. Correct. Okay. I'm pretty sure the stalker would have killed that tank, but either way. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. What a mess. I, uh, all right, all right. Macro God. We're up to 47 probes. I like how the, the prison is just hanging out. 
rent free. Are you trying to... You can just click on the disruptor to drop it out. Are you trying to drop the disruptor out first? Like... <laughs> Also, in the description here, he says his opponent goes all in for no reason. Saying that having a disruptor drop kill like a fifth of his economy was no reason. And also, there being a third negative. <laughs> there are no SCVs. Correct. <laughs> There's a reason for that. There are no SCVs to kill here. <laughs> All right. A recall. Ah. All right. Big gamer moment. This is it. <laughs> you shut the fuck up, Disruptor. You shut your stupid circular face. Goes all in for no reason. Ah, micro, micro. Only need two units, bro. Have a Colossus. Have a Ruptor. How are those disruptors working out for you? Have weird, like a weird mishmash of skins between all the units. Why does the Colossus have a skin? If nothing else does, what's going on here? Is this still gonna be fine? Sure. What are you doing? No, you... Okay. You could do... You're gonna lose, right? Like, this is... This is navigating the narrow canyon of defeat through the gaping maw of victory. Oh, he does have a classic nexus as well. All right, well. I think it's only at this moment he's realizing he could actually lose. Though somehow, despite it... You know, I think that's a good thing. Because I'm pretty sure you would have killed your own zealot. Which was killing the tanks. You need to stop. People need You just stop with the disruptors. You got, Just stop it. Just stop. It's not... Just don't. Just build some fucking zealots. Oh my god. What? And he leaves? What? He's won the game! You might be like, no he hasn't. No, he has mules! What the fuck? He has a raven. Yes, he loses the tanks. It's seven workers to nine SCVs. He still has units here. This fucking... You see, this is why a Protoss who is confident wins games. Because this, he's lost. You lost. That was dumb. It was a dumb build. You're, you're a dumb player. But you win because this is a salty-ass Terran who has no idea what the fuck he's doing. This is just classic confidence Protoss right here. Oh my god. Very Tom-esque. He did... He kind of posted a loss, but... I, honestly, credit to Shepard for being an actual loss. This is a... Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, the tanks could have just unseaged. Like, that tank could have unseaged. There's still a raven. There's full- there's eight mules ready. Oh yeah, this is a Terran win. 100 per- no doubt in my mind. You give a mildly competent Terran player this position, they win the game. The Raven still exists. It still builds energy. There's no anti-air besides this one stalker. Oh my god. You see, now, Shepard was right. The mental damage done by disruptors is- is very high. But only after you've proven the disruptors can actually do damage. 
it it does not prove it when you shoot yourself in the foot, and that's the extent of it. Oh my god. I think this was worse. Shame on you, by the way. This was a bad build. Shame. It was quite Shame. poor execution. Shame. And not just of your own units. It like the response. The fact that you have no idea why he went all in is highly amusing, but also indicates a severe lack of common sense. But at the same time, I think you will likely move up to Diamond 1 sometime this season at this rate. You confidently did the wrong thing. And that'll get you pretty far. Good job. Shame on you. Uh, it's not a judgment of whether he should move up in ranks. But, like, that was an example of a game. That was a loss. But the Terran decided to be the loser instead. So. Okay. So this is a 27-minute game. But is it, though? Because here's what the army value graph looks like. Did I have to tell you there are carriers built? Our, our Zerg's in the blue. We've had enough. The percentage is too low. Who's hacking now? Protoss, by having carriers exist. Clearly. Oh, yes. Our, our Zerg player says, I open with Ling Flood into Muta. Defending basis is pointless as Zerg. Since you can just expand somewhere else and hold down, the drone key counterattacks are the way. Um, okay. So defending base is as pointless as Zerg is the takeaway. Just another note. He just threw that in as extra. Does that include your natural? Um, from cannons? Or does, is that an exception for some reason? <laughs> uh... I haven't actually seen that. I like it. That's pretty filthy. Wow. All the way over the top there. Mm. This is why people hate Protoss. I like the panic alt click on the cannons too. No. No. Okay, this uh, this was glossed over in the strategy section. He said he started out with a Ling Flood, but he failed to mention why. It's not, it's not, well, I don't even, that one can hit the hatch, right? I think so. So you guys gotta kill that one. The rest can be dealt with later. I don't think this was worth it, though. So much for that, especially since the Protoss does not have an... Well, you know what? Since he doesn't have another expansion... Wait, how the fuck he loses this game to carriers? Oh, that is so sad. He loses the game. He could just send all the lings that he's building right now up the... Ra how? How do you loot? Well, you don't- these cannons are no longer- what? You gotta think, what are these cannons accomplishing besides making me feel uncomfortable? And then at the other time, like, what would happen if I just sent my lings across- this, Yeah, this isn't a ling flood, this is- I don't know. Well, he sent them across. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Is that one cannon? There goes the Stargate. Yeah, this is fine. Five out of three in gas, fixing it. So maybe you want to reset the rally point so the cannon don't tap. I think this is fine. Okay. All right. I know I'm saying micro over macro or macro over micro, but there are some points where micro does become relevant. And those points are when the Protoss is on one base with a bunch of cannons, and all of your units are in that base dying to said cannons. 
So this point specifically, I would I would point to as that moment. Like option one, just build some bane links. Option two, fuck off. Like <laughs> those are the two options. Pick one. He just spent more than a nexus on cannons to protect his main. So. I thought this was just going to be like a back and forth kind of macro into sky toss, like just turtling. Nope. This is a series of active mistakes. Leave two Zerglings. Make him build a Void Ray. He's about to have a... Well, like, why can't we leave two Zerglings? Because, Winter, that would take not using the Select Army hotkey. But he's not even using it. No, too hard. Oh my god. Okay, you can build queens. Ah. Finally get to break it out. Much to the dismay of everyone ever, believe it or not, you can build. Platinum Zerg, loading in again, facing a Terran, plenty of Reapers. How do I deal with all this? I don't know. What do I do? Spread the creep? Build the lings? Maybe some roaches, lair tech could be it. No! No. Queens! Queens! Build some more queens! All you need is to build the queens! Air! Ground! In between! The answer you seek has always been queens! You incompetent fucking buffoon! Building lings like you have any style. But at the end of all of your days, you find yourself trying corrosive bile. At the end, all you need was right in front of you and almost free. It's Queens. How many times? Karen, shut the fuck up. I'm freestyling. <clears throat> Queens. Queens. Thank you. Why are you building two sport crawlers for Stargate units that don't exist? But they could, like... A Void Ray's about to come out. The more, the more relevant point is, why are we building Spore Oh, because of the supply block. Oh, it's worse. Ah, we're supply block, but only because we're spending all the supply on Zerglings. So are we scared of ground or air? Which one is it? Because I can't tell yet. Two queens is not enough. Okay, so at any point, it could have just, could have gone Lair, gotten Hydras, or Anitus. Could have just built 10 queens and walked across the map. But what are we doing? Our best Platinum Zerg impression. Bunch of Zerglings. He has a Void Ray. He will eventually kill the Zerglings. It is not a matter of if, it's a matter of how long it takes to kill that many Void Rays. What are you doing? Oh my god. This is the stupid- like, it, it's not worth it anymore. We've gone from okay to no. No. Even if he killed the- the- it got the Nexus. 
No. Well, now there's three Void Rays, and we have three Queens. And they're still cannons, by the way. They're still cannons. We're still losing drones to cannons. You know what's pretty good against cannons and can heal each other the more you have? Yeah, SCVs. But... You know what also is good against... Oh my god. Queen's like an afterthought here. God. The mental damage this cannon rush has done. This is why Protoss win games. Okay, not because their units are good or their builds are solid, but because of the mental damage inflicted. And here we see another example. Living rent-free in his natural. This time quite literally. This, uh, we've been standing on the train tracks, watching the Void Rays build up for like three minutes. You knew these Void Rays were coming for like half the game now. One hundred, well, not all zerglings, but the vast majority, like a hundred. Spire, you reach into your pocket after losing a base with thirty-three drones against mass void ray. You pull out a spire. You found possibly the only used case of hydralisks where they are the right and proper and possible choice, and just passed it up. This is possibly the only, like, he already has cannons in his mineral line because of your poor decisions. He is already defended against mutas on top of having Stargate and Stargate units. The Spire, like, saying that's a wrong number. It's, a, it's like you're trying to dial him up on a fucking telegraph machine right now. I, that's just not right. Don't voids do well? It's for mutas. The problem is the Spire takes twice as long as a Hydralis Den, and Mutals provide no additional benefits. They're not better against Void Rays than Hydras are, besides the fact they can fly. But the amount of Mutas that will be able to be built is not going to challenge the Void Rays anyways. No. This is, it's, just, it's just really dumb. It's just really, really not smart. I, I, this game has deserved at least two strikes so far. It's just really very not smart. It, there are so many levels of... Just don't. He's at 300 gas. Because you can't mine for many gas and you keep losing hatcheries to Void Race. Also, spore crawlers kind of suck against Void Race, but... There's still 20 minutes in this game, because the Protoss is incompetent as well. I don't think we'll make it that far. That's a mothership. There's still a cannon. There's still a cannon, by the way. There's still a goddamn cannon! I'm sure this hatchery will go better than the last three attempts. I'm sure he doesn't have void rays waiting to just... Oh. So the Protoss has lost now... Hey, the Zerg has lost two and a half times as much. Literally only queens would have been better than every other decision so far. Mass Queen, with no gas, or maybe just upgrades for Queens, would have been a far better decision. Peach. 
I don't know why they're like 70s Erglings still. Okay, 30, but... This is the point in the game where if you're a Zerg in this position, you already, like, I would consider pulling a Terran and just leaving at this stage. It's like, oh, well, fuck. Fuck this one up. I feel like I'm, I'm going to revoke the Zergling privilege. I'm revoking the Zergling card. We're no longer allowed to build Zerglings till Hive Tech is done. Eight Zerglings, if there's a proxy like a Cannon Rush. Eight. If you can't do it with eight, need something else. The Zerglings... It hurts. It's bad. It's really bad. It's really, really... Like, how many? 136 units. 100 Zerglings. For what? Delaying a Nexus by a minute? Killing two out of three cannons, like. <laughs> Under attack. Ah yes, the mutas. I'm sure though. Got that carrier. Those are flux veins, void rays. This man over here still. He's he's now he he's like oh my god. I had to get my keyboard out and fucking start using control groups. This game has taken so long. So, sir, like, <laughs> uh, I mean, at this point, you don't get out clearly. Well, of course not. Obviously. Shame on everyone in this game. By the way, there's every everyone. We're all worse for it. Did you run out of buildings, or did you just leave? Oh, you just left. He still has some buildings. Yeah. That's um. Uh. Mm. Well. There was a, quite a narrow path to losing that game in the first 10 minutes, but congratulations on finding it. I'm going to go with Attention Deficit Zerg as well, because that was certainly in full force. Um, 100%. Kybert tried three times to send in his replay. So... We're going to spend three minutes on it. Don't worry, it's not much longer than that. No BCs. Oh, yes. All right, so he's floating the barracks in against a Protoss. This is gold. He's gotten worse. Impressive. Um, a, a Protoss who went Forge first, so therefore doesn't have a Cyber Claw. The, the bunker somehow finishes, which is quite impressive. Okay, so that was bad. Don't just stand there, shoot back! Add on is done. The other guy is attacking you. I believe that cannon blocks the Obviously. Nexus. Not that the player had any intention on the Nexus. So this is truly not good and dumb. But it's no surprise. Your base has some We're gonna do some Reaper Micro with 750, 350 in the bank and nothing else in production. This is like the Zerg who just decided to attack into cannons despite the Protoss hamstringing themselves so hard. So yeah, we're just we're just going to make these static defense units effective. Is finished, so you have no cloak manchi and turrets a typical counter to someone who's gone cannons use not to build something your research is done don't forget the rest of them that command center upgrade you ordered is upgrade complete 
Hyper Flight, Stim, and Combat Shield. Yeah, that's quite a combo. Mineral field depleted. All right, and there's the Selecto Army hotkey to bring the Banshees we so put so much effort to sitting in the corner of the map with. Thankfully, the Protoss decided attacking up a ramp in the siege tanks was the play. All right. All right, and it ends. That was terrible. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. Moving on. Shame. Nani was desperate. He's a Diamond Three Terran. Diamond Three Terrans are always hungry. Subscription confirmed. Automatically relaying. This Thanks. game. It's from a few days ago. I play every day. I just switched to NA because better ping on Singapore. Swag. Fucking 25 minute game. We're not giving it the 25 minute treatment. But we will see. As for hope score, nobody has any hope in that last one. Uh, it was bad and dumb. New subscribe detected. Jeff Fenninth is chilling for And I, I hate it. Just FYI. In case that was relevant. The Reaper is not like uh, just annoy a tweak his ear a bit and then come on home. <laughs> Uh, you're kind of trying to figure out whether he takes a third or if he's doing it all in. It was at this moment that he knew well, he fucked up. Actually... Never mind. What a thing! A little late to be to be uh, slapping that bunker down. There are bane links. By the way, did you not see the bane links? Well, here we go. That was. That's. Well, that was this is why people don't bane it's just not good roaches are way better banelings like even when they work they don't really work they cost too much wow that that could not have gone that was almost as bad as that last zerg he's made them 22 more lings now too well that yeah well you are winning now up 10 workers and the number matters 27 to 18 like 18 how is this game 24 minutes long i had i submitted the wrong one but i had a problem in this game too well the game's 24 minutes long so no matter how it goes from here you fucked up I can make that assumption. There is no situation in which a Terran should be 3cc against a 2 base Zerg with more workers, and the game should continue. Like, I wouldn't have blamed the Zerg for tapping out. The Zerg who's now blocked his own lings into his base because he's so scared of Hellions. By the way, you probably could have just attacked with the Hellions, but fine, whatever, I get it. <laughs> Command center upgrade complete. Oh, oh, here we go. Micro in again. Research. Eric's fine. Okay. Oh my god. Now take it. Count your blessings. It's good. It's fine. Don't think too hard. Okay. Not no, just because the bunker's there doesn't mean it always has to be there. By the way, <laughs> the production's fine. Now you need NG base. The widow mines are overkill here. No, no, you already saw it. He, he, okay, he ain't got shit. It's not, he has nothing. He has 33 drones, no lair, no upgrades. He's hard walled in himself with his lings. All you have to do is build pretty much whatever the fuck you want. 
Uh, it doesn't even matter at this point. I was afraid of mutas or roaches or nidus. Why? What? How is he gonna magically, like, how does every zerg... How does the zerg simultaneously do a bane bust that you delete and also have any money? Because, I don't know, he's zerg. They just get money, right? No, that's mules. You have the mules, which is literally free money. You got three CCs. Depleted. Complete. Engineering bay is missing. Okay, bring out the Terran for dummies. Okay, here we are. I don't know what to do, Winter. What should I do? Well, there you go. I'm far ahead, but I don't know how to win the game. Oh. I saw a hard wall. I couldn't. You sent your cloak, Fetchy, into his base where it flew over both of his hatcheries, both of which were hatcheries. That means, and this is true, if they're hatcheries, they are not lairs, and therefore he doesn't have a lair. Strike for lack of ability to. Put one and one together. No, no, no. Fuck you. Fuck you with this weak-ass, bitch-ass, Terran-ass shit. This is the most self-fulfilled. You just spent fucking 600 minerals on scans. And now you're going to scan that he started a spire at the 8-minute mark. You can max out at Terran at the 9-minute mark. You could walk across with naked marines without even any guns. Just start beating on the fucking door, and you probably could still win the game. But you're over here scanning like he has weapons of muta destruction or some shit. No, you have not been threatened. This is not even fair anymore for him. I don't know. He could have I very much. He would have. If he had left the game, that would have been more reasonable than most of the Terrans we've seen leave the game so far tonight. That's how far behind he was. It was perfectly fine for him to leave. He just didn't because he knows he's up against a Terran who's probably going to be more scared of his own shadow than he is of, well, really anything. I don't, but I don't know. Somehow the Zerg can go for a fucking two base baneling bust on hatch tech, but also simultaneously have every piece of tech that could ever threaten me in the history of StarCraft. How the fuck is this? Does he have the Queen of Blades over there? The Obermind is calling in like 74 more broods with plot armor and the entire tech tree? What the, what is your explanation? What is your mathematical proof that that is possible? Because I have mathematical proof scouted by you, both in the front of your base and inside of his, that it's not. But yet you have three fucking scans over here. My God. Oh my, I, I, this, this takes it. It's been a, a wow, that's an impressive amount of cowardice right there. And here's the thing, here's the beauty of all that. Now that you scouted everything you were scared of, what changes? He's going mutas and roaches. What are we doing differently now that we scouted that? Because you already built the turrets before. You already built the turrets. You already built the production. Nothing is the answer. You looked at that shit like it's your Twitter feed, all right? Well, that's interesting over there. That sounds pretty terrible. And then moved on with your life because... What now? Oh, now I put add-ons in my barracks. Oh, sick reaction. Ah, that's a bold move. Good choice. Complete. Yeah, add some more turrets on. The best defense against mutas is a good offense. Oh my fucking god, you're such a bitch. Holy shit. Walk! You have legs! Oh my god. I get it. It's right there. But let's not pretend. 
The reason we're in these medevacs because it's far too scary to walk outside after that mainling bust. Oh my god. This is the worst case of Terror Terran I've uh, not, maybe not ever seen, but it's up there. This is a terminal case. Terror Terran, of course, is when the existence of your opponent and the other races in the game of StarCraft is the most devastating thing to ever happen. No matter whether or not they are actually a threat or reality or you just made them up in your head. Or even played StarCraft many years ago and think about it, but then you think about dying to Banelings. It's like, oh my god. So, some credit, I guess, for actually playing the game. Which gives you some credit. I think we're in debt, though. And we're going to stay there. Who would have thought we would have roaches and banelings after the triple scan scouted all of that? Where are you going? What are you doing? What is this? Okay, fine. Uh, just. Well, that was about as wasteful as we possibly Upgrade. could. No, st f fuck off with the Hellions. Fuck it, shoot, the shoot yourself. Take your Hellions over to your Marines and shoot them with the Marines. That is my counter to this. Stop it. Kill the Hellions, then get your 2-2 upgrades and build some actual units. It's enough. Complete. You're not getting in there. Let's stop it. Let him kill them. Move on. Research complete. Stop. Stop it. How are you over here fucking... Are you kidding me? You started drill... How did you even start drilling costs? How, how did you... Okay. One. Where are the widow mines? Two. How do you even start? Did Upgrade. you even go back to your base? Do you have it on like a hotkey? What the fuck? Research complete. Okay. So you start drilling costs. So he clicked. He went back to his base. But the 2 2 infantry weapons and armor were not a priority. No, we gotta get this creep tumor. What? what are you doing? Where do you think he is? Where did you think he went? You killed his fourth base with a medevac drop. You think he's attacking right now? He's waiting for your fucking medevac. Do you remember your medevac drop? I got in. Yay. Oh my god. You've been brave. No, he hasn't. He's not been brave. This has been... At, this is about... The only reason the Hellions are allowed in is because the Hellions aren't, like, units that you're supposed to have. You're supposed to keep the Marines alive. This... Look at this. He's pre-splitting. No, he's sitting at his base because you did a medevac drop. Is all his units... Do not go back to your base with no 2-2 upgraded, no SCVs in production, with ha only half your barracks producing, a thousand minerals in the bank. Start fucking pre-splitting against literally your own, like, the, the mental construction of the Zerg that is bearing down on you with 450 supply of fucking Ultralisks. He's not brave. Ignorance doesn't make you brave. It just makes you dumb. It's different. I like I like how the idea of walking was vetoed. Nope, no, nope, nope. Back in the Metavex. No, just fly away. Remember, at some point in this game, it was three CCs and like 30 workers to 18 drones on two hatch. Just remember that as time goes on. Your forces are under attack. 
Will someone pay attention to Kybert? He's been trying really hard this whole time. Somebody acknowledge him. Oh my god, there's Mutas! Unfortunately, the tanks were in the only obvious place for the Mutas to go. Research complete. Your forces are under attack. Oh my fucking... I can't... I had five more turrets just to make sure. Oh shit, those are accidental swarm hosts. How will we react to that? I don't even know what to do about that. I like the control groups. I mean, obviously, Rack Barrow. Banshee, another expendable unit, unlike Marines. Was that everyone? Well, besides the house tanks. Clearly. Straight for the hatch. Gonna get it, because Marines are amazing. The slickest of pickups gets over half the Marines out. There's 11 swarm hosts on the way. I guess he meant it. Which is... An impressively wrong call here. This does not seem like a Zerg who's going to be handling Swarm Host very well. Look at that pre-split. You know, the pre-split would be great if it didn't come with a pre-stim and no medivacs. You've managed to do so many things right at the incredibly and utterly and disgustingly and offensively wrong time. Wow. Like... It's like we only watched the highlight clips of any Terran ever. Where you see, like, Mutas getting defended and, and splits and medevac drops. Upgrade complete. And not the walking across the map and killing them with twice the supply because you're winning. This is a very bold Zerg to go swarm host with a control group for his hatcheries and his mutas only. So maybe evenly matched here. Mineral field depleted. Is there a starport somewhere in that uh, extravagant? I, there is. Okay. This is the micro duel of the century. 177 to 174 supply, both sides with enough money to max out and get whatever. Wow, the Zerg is not even done with plus one melee. Walk. Walk. Legs. Wheels. Just. Just walk. Of course, the moment we're setting up this shitty, terrible, stupid drop is the moment that the Zerg actually attacks. Into such a sick pre-split. It's honestly such a good pre-split, it actually did fine. Didn't do great, but...
this is not a stand your ground and, and maintain your intervals, men, situation. This is a get in and get the fuck out. What the fuck? What do I know, I guess? How do I... Your forces are under attack. If you load up one more goddamn medevac from your main when your fourth base exists... Oh no, he has too many medevacs. That's dangerous. He agrees. One medevac for 50 marines. I've seen this video. That's more like it. Don't want to risk all the medevacs at once. Yep, those are swarm hosts. And then he's like, wait a second, are they swarm hosts? Yes, they're still swarm hosts. These are ultras, but don't worry about those. Those are swarm hosts. I don't think anyone's worried about the ultras apparently right now. Your forces are under attack. Big stim. Look away, look away, look away. Everybody look away. We have gotten to the point where the Zerg is winning. It's been, we've really put a lot of effort into it, but we've managed it. The Zerg is winning. Good job. If I was looking to throw a game and make it look like I wasn't, I wouldn't play like this because this was just actively horrible. But, so that's why I believe this is truly the way uh, we usually play here. I like this. You know, how do I fight Ultra Ling Muda? What you do, you trickle out the Marines one by one, so that way they get tired after eating them all one bite at a time. And then when they're when they're chilling and lounging around afterwards, yeah, that's when you strike. With what? Uh, Accord. Yes, have you heard my new mixtape? I thought swarm hosts were alone, then saw his whole army there. Okay, let's see how long it took you to forget about the entire army. All right, so there's the whole army. Okay, all right. So, army goes off the screen. Where did it go? Who knows? Okay. So, probably just the swarm hosts. Ignore this. Okay. Yeah. Even if it was just the swarm hosts, though. Was this a good idea? You already know the answer. It's a very leading question. Even if it was only the swarm host, it was still a horrible idea. But the lack of object permanence makes it more fun. Now, pray tell, where did the rest of the army go? Like, let's let's think if we were the Zerg. I know it's very, very, very incredibly, impossibly, inhumanly hard. If we were the Zerg, where did I go? Did I run all the way home into my... Uh, you see, you're, you're... I get it, I get it. He's projecting. You know what he would have done after doing any damage? He would have taken all his units and run all the way back into his main. Where they're safe and cozy. So, unfortunately, the Zerg did not do that. So you gotta think like a Zerg. Alright. Gotta get right in their mind. Okay. So the best case scenario here was everything but the swarm house had gone home or disappeared magically. Even that. I... Oh, that's a big stim. Unfortunately, no medevacs to ferry things over. Didn't hear a nidus. That doesn't mean there's not a nidus. There's been a nidus since the game started. You just can't see it. We gotta keep scanning random ass fucking locations. It's out there. There's a nidus headed right towards our base. Okay? Defend yourself and your family. Buy a stock in orbital command. We need more orbital. We gotta find it. 
Your forces are under attack. I do like how the widow mine has provided skill. <laughs> Can't trust those widow mines. They're very untrustworthy <laughs> creatures. I don't trust them either, right? I just... My god, you never know. It could be lying to you. Mineral field depleted. Widow mines are sneaky snakes. Mm. All right, get them, boys. Did give up that easily? <laughs> Here's Ricky. They killed the hatch. Off screen, of course. Uh <laughs> Mineral field depleted. Mineral field depleted. I love the pre splits. It's like shuffling around a bowl of chicken broth. Still not a counter to ultras, but it makes you feel like you're doing something. And I dip my finger in, and then just stir it around a little bit, you know. This is actually not a horrible fight. Ultras are not great. Does he have kindness planning? He does. But he only has plus one armor. He has plus one melee and armor. <laughs> Which means the ultras kind of just die. And then the swarm hose. And we got a game. And the Widowmine gets it on the action. And Broodlords. A new challenger approaches. The Locust. Three units on both sides. Nope, nope, they don't. They like, kill the main <laughs> man. It's like a campaign mission. It's like the one with the underground one. We gotta kill all the eggs. Vespine Geyser exists. If only. Okay, are they literally walled or just figuratively? Mineral just figuratively. Field. Besides the house tanks, of course. Those ones are there by choice. Is that the main command center? I guess we're going broodlords now. Those are unupgraded broodlords, right? No, plus two flyer attack. Three three Marines are pretty good though. Not that good. What a game. What a game. <sighs> the beauty of it is. With a few mules, maybe we're right back in it. Like, what is the army? It is morphing brood lords. There's zero zerglings. This is actually the only anti-ground army. It's the brood lords. That's it. That's the entire army. You don't need to scan. It's right in front of you. It's literally, this is it. This is all of it. It's right there. So what does that mean? Yeah, don't worry about them. Forward! Your 
Yeah, I think this is a case of missing the forest for... Um, this is like someone hitting you over the head with a tree. Or like a bat getting permanent brain damage and then playing a lot of StarCraft. Like, most of it's there, but there are some parts missing. That's the part of the forest we're missing. Because this was the most creative interpretation. It was truly Terran, but at the same time, wow. He's about Wait, it's about to end, right? You can't be sure, because the opponent is up there, too. Like, uh... I'm expecting a GG. Oh, the house tanks have to move after all this time? Yeah. So, that is, um... You you won the game. And then, you spent 10 minutes losing it. Which was a real effort. I will give you a lot of credit. You put a lot of... That's a D+. Plus. Wow. That was indeed something. I'm not even... That's not even shame. No, there's no shit. It's all right. It's fine. It's good to see someone truly asserting themselves on the game. Yeah, that was, uh... At some point, I think I, I passed into acceptance. And that made it much more enjoyable. Um, yeah, the acceptance was better. It's over! Wake up! We're at the end. Did you press like and subscribe? No, not that. That one. Yes. Did you make it this far? Thank you to most of the people who sent in replays one way or another. I hope you enjoyed um, whatever version of the Angry Coach Marathon or whatever amount. Um, the current plan for now is the third Saturday of the month. I don't know if it'll be free next time. You know I'm not that generous. But uh, I think this was a good return. So... I hope you guys enjoyed Between the Zergs with short-term memory loss, the Terrans with um, PTSD from a war they never fought in, and the Protoss with the inability to remember what they were thinking at the beginning of the sentence. Either way, you all need to get the fuck off TikTok and learn to have an attention span longer than 15 seconds because it's a real problem out there. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Angry Coach. Uh, marathon. Uh, welcome back. Welcome, period. I hope you tune in to next time and all the other ones as well. They're pretty much... I mean, there's a lot of the same, but I like to think I'm creative and unique each time, despite the replays being very similar. So, uh, no, it just keeps going. Good luck. Have fun. I hope I made your day, a lot of your day, a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned.